Hey, this is a tutorial on how to include notifications in your iOS app using Swift and Xcode 10.1. Let's begin. The first step is to create a single view app and I'm just going to name it Simple Notif, um, Sample Notif. And then next, create. Okay, then on main.storyboard, we're going to need a button, a text field, and a label. Now, I'll rename the button to start notification. I'll just make this a little bit bigger. I'll set the placeholder text to seconds. The label will be enter number of seconds. So this text will give the gap between any two repeating notifications. And if you're doing non-repeating, then the gap between the start launching of the app or not the launching, the gap between pressing the button and the time at which the notification arrives. Then let's open up view controller and then let's create a function for the button. Now I'll just name this uh, how about action. We're going to need a few more functions, but we'll do that later. Then I'll create an outlet property for this. And then let's just name that uh, maybe like min text. Actually, this is in seconds, so sec txt. Right, that's there. And now we can close the main.storyboard page. Okay, and before we start programming under these function headers, I'm just going to put all the functions in here. So we need a function called construct. And this function will basically be used to construct the notification. Then we'll need a function called notif, which will actually call the notification. All right, that's it for now. And this is to, uh, let's call it um, create a calling structure for notification. Let's get rid of this comment. And we're ready to start. Now we need a few more packages over here. So we need user notifications. First one. And also we have to import foundation. Now under construct. Uh, firstly, construct is actually has it has a return type, and that is un mutable notification content. This is going to return the content of the notification after constructing the content. Now let's create an object for the un mutable notification content. There you go, and let's start adding the properties. The title can be uh, about sample notification title. Okay, then the content dot body. We can make that notification body. Then content dot sound 
can be the default sound, which is UN notification sound dot default. Now you can also add a badge over the app, and that can be done through this property content dot badge equals one. Now you can also add an attachment over here, like an attachment image. Attach image. Okay. So for this, you need to first include the image over here. So let's do that. Let's go to desktop code. I have an image over here, or let's go with penguin. Okay. Let's drag the penguin over here. Finish. Make sure that these are selected. And there you go. Penguin is right there. Now we need to create a variable to access the URL of the image. So over here you put the file name and over here you put the extension. Now it tries to open the attachment and if it cannot then it allows you to perform some code if there's an error. Attachment, yes, that's it. With identifier, let's make the identifier penguin. And the URL just needs to be the URL that we created just now. And options, no, just keep it simple. And if it works, then it's going to use that particular image to create that attachment and if it doesn't then yeah let's just we don't have to code that for now it works just fine even without coding that and finally it returns content so content is a UN mutable notification content type object, and that is what is being returned. Now, under notif, we need to call the notification that we just created. So we'll create a trigger object. Let's just make this false for now. You can change it to true whenever you need to repeat it at regular intervals of time. Okay, now I put the identifier penguin over here, which matches with the resource, with the identifier over here, not the resource, just the identifier. Actually, let's change that. So penguin uh, notif. Yeah, so this identifier has to match with this one. I'm calling the construct function over here to return the content. And this trigger matches with this.
Then like, there's just a finisher line over here. QN user notification center dot current dot add request with completion handler error in and over here you're supposed to handle the error but we don't need to do that because there most likely shouldn't be an error now under this action function we will create a variable cut seconds and we'll take the minutes text wait that wasn't minutes that was seconds so set text and then use that text as the number of seconds but then we also need to convert this into a double variable so let's do that explicitly okay that's done then let's just call notif okay let's run that oh wait one second i missed something we haven't used the second variable yet the way we can do that is by making this the value of the seconds variable but for that we need to put that seconds variable as a parameter in the notification in order to do that we can put an integer time as seconds and then put the seconds in here oh wait a second This is how it's done. Okay, time will be a double actually. Let's make that a double. And then put the time in here. And then over here, we put time as seconds. Now let's run that and see if it works. Oh wait, put another bug. Let's get rid of that. Now it should work. Let's run it. Okay, let's put five in there and then see if it works. Right, so the reason that didn't work was because I missed a certain portion of it. Um, Apple requires you to request notification permission before you can actually use those notifications so we need to do that over here Okay, allow, let's make that five seconds. Start notification and let's close it. There you go, that worked just fine. 